Obviously, there are many religious religions in the world, many religious views and, and <coughs> systems that people uh, adhere to and believe in. Uh, and uh, it does seem to me that not only the unique thing about Christianity, but the truly astonishing and bewildering uh, thing about Christianity compared to any other worldview is the idea that God would uh, assume human form mm. and undergo human suffering. Uh, and furthermore, I guess, undergo human suffering to a degree that uh, none of us could begin to comprehend because he's not just sort of suffering for his sins or any, any one person's sins, but for all the sins. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, I mean, somehow that does seem relevant to this problem, but can you think, and it's very, I think it's very difficult to think about this and probably to talk about it, but how should that affect the way we think of uh, evil and suffering in the world? The way it affects my thinking is this. If that's all there was, there'd be no window into a solution. But if the central claims of Christianity are true, Christ rose again from the dead. Now that puts a completely different light on the whole question. You see, when we go through all of this discussion, normally in a secular context, the hidden assumption is death's the end. And that's why I said atheism is hopeless by definition, because death is the end. And for the vast majority of people in the world, in history, life has not been particularly happy. So there's no hope. Now, let's follow me, because <clears throat> I think it's worthwhile, whether you, you may disagree completely, that's fine, but <clears throat> it's good to listen at least to what Christianity has to say to see if it makes any coherent sense, because if it makes no coherent sense, you may forget about it, because coherence is at least one of the criteria of truth. The other one is, does it correspond to reality? So. The distance we've got at the moment is this, that this is God becoming human, incredible as it may seem, and dying and suffering, but then rising again. Now, when the early apostles went round the world, and proclaimed that Jesus had risen from the dead, one of the major things they said was this, therefore, there is going to be a final judgment. And that wasn't a grim idea, it was a wonderful idea. Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, did you notice, I didn't emphasize it when I read Richard Dawkins, he says there's no justice. But that's a horrific concept. I mean, just think of what that means. If death is the end, the vast majority of people who have ever lived will never get justice. They don't get it in this life, and there's no next life to get it in. And I put this to Dawkins directly in public, and he said, well, I work for justice in this life. And I said, so do I, Richard. That's a wonderful thing to do, but it still is the fact that there is no ultimate justice, so the terrorists get away with it. The people that stoke the folks into the gas chambers get away with it. Hitler gets cornered, he blows his brains out, he's got away with it. Do you really believe in a universe like that? Because if you do, you're essentially saying that your conscience that demands justice is an illusion. I don't believe it's an illusion. But the thing that backs it up is the fact that I believe that because Jesus rose from the dead, 
He's going to be the judge. And nobody's going to get away with it. That is a magnificent message. And therefore, because he's utterly fair and righteous, he's going to be able to assess all this kind of thing. And I would go even further than that. You see, I, I was really moved to tears listening to Roman Kent last night because he talked about the children in Auschwitz who were murdered almost instantly. And he said, as I remember their screams, I wondered, do their screams ever reach heaven? That's a very poignant thing to say, a very moving thing. And I, I sat there just transfixed, last night it was. And I thought, did they? If God is who I think he is, is Jesus Christ, then they did reach heaven. And God has done something so magnificent with those kids that if you could see it, you might have fewer questions. You see, what Christianity gives me is not a simple solution. It doesn't take away the pain, <clears throat> but it can give tremendous hope so that my 22-year-old niece, and I talked to her before she died, she died full of hope. That's what makes the difference. Uh, and therefore, sorry to go on about that, but you've got to take two things together then in the, in the Christian message, both the death and the resurrection of Christ. This idea of there being a final judgment is a wonderful idea. Now, we react against it because we don't like the idea of being judged. But that's where the other side of Christianity came in that Daniel mentioned to you. That when Christ was dying, he wasn't merely suffering. He was dying for our sin so that we could receive forgiveness. So this is an immense package, really, that deals with the problem. And it is, as Daniel said, utterly unique.